So what is a transpiler? Well, you're probably familiar with the term compiler, and a compiler takes a source level language and normally converts it to a lower level language, for example, C code into bytecode, etc. A transpiler is different. A transpiler takes a language or a source code and converts it to just a different similar level source code. Es similar a este video que de repente te llega en español. But unlike me butchering Spanish, transpilers are meant to do a good job in doing that conversion. And how does that relate then to SQL and the features coming in 23C? I'll create a person table that's going to store some names for me. And the first name I'll put in is Mike Hitchra, my manager. I'll also throw in Maria Colgan and I'll add Larry Ellison. Now, as you know, Larry Ellison is way at the top of Oracle. And so I'll put his name in caps because I feel that it respects the man. However, that might not be how we want to report the data. We might want to report the information with a nice consistency. As most people will be aware, we have an init cap function, which is ideal for that task. If I run a query to get the init cap of the various columns to make sure I get all the case correctly or consistent across all the rows, you can see that it has solved the problem for me. Everyone comes out with a nice capitalized first letter. And then a problem occurs, and that problem is me, because I have a somewhat awkward name. Let me insert myself into the table as well and rerun the function. You can see now what happens. My surname is not understood by initcap. It doesn't understand that the D was meant to be capitalized. Now, if I'm particularly finicky about that, I could maybe choose to fix it by building my own function. I can take initcap and extend it. So I've built a similar version here where I'm just looking for the places where initcap sometimes struggles. Things like Mac and Mook and sometimes after apostrophes, some letters should be capitalized, some should not be. So I've built my own in Peel SQL and now I can give that a run in place of the normal initcap. And as you can see, I've solved my problem. But the devil lies in the details because as we know, once we start calling Peel SQL functions from SQL, there's a performance overhead. We have a context switch between the two engines. We can use the Pragma UDF facility to somewhat improve that, but we'd rather not have to call the Peel SQL functions at all. And this is where SQL transpiling comes in in 23C. I'll turn it on at my session level, and now I'll do an execution plan on my query, which calls my Peel SQL function. Notice now in the notes section, there's a native case expression sitting there right in the SQL. The database through transpiling has looked into my Peel SQL function, seen that it is just a normal SQL style expression and folded that expression directly into the SQL. It no longer needs to call a Peel SQL function. We have transpiled Peel SQL code into SQL code. That's what the transpiler does. Obviously, we need to be very cautious here. If we're ripping code out of a Peel SQL function, folding it into the SQL layer, we need to make sure that we're never going to get inconsistent or incorrect results. So we take a very cautious approach. We only do that when we know that we're not going to possibly you know, corrupt the result. Hence, if I make a subtle change to this Peel SQL function, I've simply added an if then statement, which is always true. Even though we can, as developers, know immediately that this is the same result, the transpiler takes a very cautious approach. If I rerun the execution plan again, you can see now I've no longer done any transpiling. The Peel SQL function, as before, is now called explicitly from the engine. It's much better for us to take a courses approach than ever end up with incorrect results. You can think of the transpiler as a great way of getting performance benefits where possible when you don't have control over the code base. We're just looking for opportunities to drag Peel SQL function calls directly into SQL. If you have more control over the code, then maybe a scalar SQL macro, also in 23C, is a better option. That gives you a more granular control over the code and how you're going to fold it into the SQL layer. But Scalar SQL Macros is a topic for another video. So check out the transpiler. It can be enabled at session level, and you might see some dramatic performance benefits without having to touch a lot of code.